Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sabidia Truda, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where last time, our hero, King Hector, threw a blend of sheer charisma and bribery and blackmail, admittedly, mainly bribery and blackmail, he took a major step forward to obtaining our goal of the restoration of the Roman Empire. Because he is now, by far, the favoured candidate to be the next Emperor. There is just one small little problem with that. And uh, that problem is, uh, he's 48, the Emperor's 52. And this is Crusader Kings 2, so four years means nothing. Either of these men could just drop dead tomorrow. And sadly, no one really wants to help me assassinate the Emperor, which is a bit of a shame. And also, he's just like, sign me up, some stupid war on the far side of the world. So, okay, we'll see whether I'm going to that or not, because... I don't know whether he'll actually, you know, want me as one of his commanders. Admittedly, I would be one of the better ones. Just because, yeah, martial, personal combat skill. I'm in pretty good shape, all things considered. But, if he does want to send me to the far side of the world, uh, then I think I might just be, uh, rigging the deck a little bit. Or, alternatively, no I won't, because the war just immediately ended. Because the Chaos of Spell I was no longer valid. Okay, so that war was a bit of a damp squib. This is good news, though. No war means I don't need to march to the other side of the universe. Okay, my cunning plan, by the way, was not to use my own troops, but instead just, like, um, hire some very cheap mercenaries just to go and, like, you know, escort my king and just stay close to him and make sure he was kept safe. But, um, in the end, as it turns out, uh, no, we don't need to do that. Marvellous. I'm not sure what just happened here, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, this territory was the one that was actually contested. And it seems to have just fallen straight into the hands of the guys who were contesting it. So, possibly Amalfi just surrendered, I'm not sure. Okay, well this is marvellously good news, because this means we can now focus all our attention on basically the ticking death counter of various characters that I need to, uh, go down. For example, here we go, my former wife. Princess Philippa, who we had to divorce and is now basically holding three of my daughters hostage, who could currently be married, you know, all matrilineal-like, and as a result of that, producing children, because, I'm gonna be honest, there's clearly something wrong with King Hector's DNA, because he's managed to produce eight daughters to one son, two sons admittedly, but one of them did die due to some skullduggery, but uh, yes, I've now got a single son, Basically, if this kid dies, then the Empire's in a lot of cocky trouble. So my former wife at the age of 52 has developed cancer, so she won't be around for too much longer. And then it's just a question of uh, me versus the Emperor. Okay, as I'm not marching off to the other side of the world, let's just make sure all my lovers are suitably uh, sweet on me. So, there we go. Get you up to 89, you up to 93. Beautiful. So, hopefully, we can get ourselves some more babies here. And speak of the devil, Parthena is pregnant again. So, okay. If we're really lucky, one more beautiful, legitimate son. That would be an excellent backup, just in case. And a vast inheritance warning pops up. But yes, these are a little bit on the, um, confusing side. Because they don't really explain... Why? They just say that apparently, yeah, the Duke of Hum, there might be some, uh, problems going forward. But I'm not sure what problems those are going to be, because, uh, yeah, he's gonna pass down territory uh, just in terms of, yeah, gavel kind or whatever. He's got a son who's the, ah, the heir to the Bulgarian revolt. Okay, interesting. Yes, I see the problem here, potentially. So if the Bulgarian revolt were to win then in theory, that person would become the heir to the Bulgarian throne. Okay, well I think they're not going to win. I'm pretty sure they're losing badly at the minute. Oh yeah, the existing ruler has most definitely got the advantage here, so that should be fine. Okay, while we're just waiting on children, deaths, etc., one thing I can very usefully do, which is figure out who has the most influence in the Empire, because I want to stay nice and close to those guys. Here we go. A problem. So, Amphipatos, you apparently just changed your vote. I'm still winning, but it's no longer such a landslide. And part of the reason you're backing him is because you get on really, really well with, yeah, both the Emperor, who's backing him, and you also just personally like him. 
Okay, well, me and you are going to become firm friends, all right? I'm going to start trying to uh, sway you as best we can. And actually, hang on, you're not married. Okay, if I could get some of my daughters back from the Bulgarian court, I might just be able to get some marriage ties with you. That's got to be worth a lot of reputation. Also, this guy is a master seducer. Not sure if I've ever actually seen that little symbol before. That's really cool. Ah. Decision time over in, uh, Armenia. We've got to decide- oh. Um, Armenia's not- It's not looking so hot, actually. No, I'm very sorry. Once upon a time, I figured you might actually be, um, useful for something. But, uh, no, actually. Kale can do better than you. Speaking of which, Kale is... Okay, she's nice and clever at the bare minimum. That's nice. Right, Break the betrothal there, don't need any of that nonsense. Kale, don't worry, gonna find you a lovely husband. Because yes, I wouldn't mind using some of my family just to breed additional family members, just to flesh out the dynasty, because it's a bit, uh, small at the minute. The problem is, uh, I don't want to use her for that because, uh, yeah, she's actually got a stutter there, so that might be passed down genetically. I'm not sure that's how stutters actually work, but screw it, that's how it works in this game. So, uh, yeah, we probably don't want that being passed down. Oh no, here's interesting. Armenia may have just flipping burst, but we've got something new that seems to have, yeah, eaten a fair bit of it. In fact, yeah, religion I've not actually seen on the map before. Nestorian. So, uh, those guys are technically Christian. Admittedly, this guy is uh, suffering from consumption, is possessed by Satan, which is not great in some ways. Not great at all. But you know what? We're gonna give it a go. It's not like I've got a lack of daughters or anything. Kale, you head over there. No need for it to be matrilineal or anything. You're not very good, so it barely even matters. We'll send you over for a non-aggression pact. They're totally up for that because, yes, everyone loves Hector. He is just swimming in prestige. She is not entirely incompetent. She's a good young age, so plenty of children potentially. Yeah, he will go for that. Good. And then all we need to do is drag these guys into an alliance. And he seems fond of me. So let's see if they're actually willing to do that. Yep, dumb. Boom. Lovely. So now we've got ourselves a friend close by to all of this nonsense. They might be able to help us out down the line. And uh, they've got a decent army. In fact, actually, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Admittedly, some of it is event spawned. But... That's a decent volume of land. I think they could actually do all right for themselves. Okay, never mind. The pointless holy war supporting Amalfi for reasons that aren't 100% clear is back on. And I've put on my shiny hat, so I guess I'm flipping going again. Still, I managed to get my wife pregnant before I actually went, so that's positive at the bare minimum. Sadly, couldn't get my lover pregnant, but what can you do, eh? So... There we go. That was my uh, my mother-in-law just passed away. That is it. Oh, hang on. Isn't my mother-in-law the... Yes, the wife of the emperor. Unfortunately, I'm lacking in people I can actually, yes, offer to uh, marry to him. I could betroth him to one of my young children. But um, interestingly, the one person I could offer that he'd say yes to is my own lover, Evanthea, who he would agree to marry just because he likes me so much. But no, 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 that's my lover. He would be willing to accept betrothal to my bastard daughter. The problem is, there's not really much point. What's the benefit of that? I mean, I guess it keeps him tied up so he can't marry anybody else, but then anyone else he marries hardly even, uh, hardly even matters, really. No, I guess we'll just leave it be, to be honest. That should be absolutely fine. Yeah, we'll just let him marry whoever he wants. Oh, this is nice. Just out of nowhere, I've picked up the finger of St. John, because apparently, yeah, priests are worried about robbers or something. So, uh, free thing for my treasury. Love it. I swear I had one of those already, but possibly we lost it at some point. I'm not sure. Still, I'll gladly take learning plus one for free. That's not bad at all. And, uh, yeah, piety up too. That's useful to sell on occasion. I am allowed to rename it, though. So, uh, yes, that can be the finger of St. John from now on. Lovely. Oh, good. A daughter has been born. I'm so happy to have a ninth daughter. She shall be named Y, after what I yelled at the messenger who told me I had a ninth daughter. And we have got ourselves some form of fight going on over here. The forces of Amalfi have actually managed to field 2,000. 
This is... Uh, hang on, what's the territory around here? Desert. Okay, why have you got uh, an advantage there? Ah, okay, just um, cavalry has the advantage in deserts. Gotcha. We've got a big force coming in, which may or may not involve me. It's kind of... Oh, hang on. What? What are you doing over there? Why are you going to war right now? Right, okay, you just want pecs. You know what? That's fine. Help yourself. Hungary is uh, kind of a non-issue at this point. Oh, and bloody hell, the Amalfi forces have managed to get together 12,000 troops. Ah, okay, that's me. I am leading 10,000 troops right there. Am I allowed to see what's going on? I feel like I should do. That's literally me that just sort of won that one. But uh, whatever, apparently we're doing very, very well these days. That's nice. Okay, this war doesn't seem particularly dangerous. I feel like we're just going to win it and be on our way. In fact, I'm not even sure where I actually am. Um, am anymore because my massive army was wandering north but now it just seems to have gone somewhere i guess it's here but i seem to have been withdrawn from command at the minute so okay admittedly we are losing a lot of troops in the desert here i feel like we're just yeah basically losing a catastrophically large amount of men wandering around the desert and oh bloody hell what's going on over here Okay, nothing too major, to be honest. Small revolt. I think that's because those guys have gone a bit on the um the heretic-y side. Yes, they've all gone a bit lollard. So we need to go and deal with that. Also, um, maybe a bigger problem. It would appear that um there's been a small, small, very insignificant revolt against the actual um the Byzantine Emperor right now. And oh bloody hell. Right, so. Actually, I've teleported home to protect the Emperor, who I would like to die. But if I want to stop protecting him from the revolt that could unseat him in my favour, then I'd have no choice but to resign my commander position, meaning I wouldn't be eligible to replace him any... Okay, yes, I think I've got my head around that. Right, I'll go and deal with the Peasant Revolt, because I think the Emperor's busy and I don't want him distracted, to be honest. So... Oh! Okay, it's Princess Cocking Phyllis. Right, well, fine, I suppose. She's just spawned 21,000 troops out of her arse. Love it. The Emperor does have 15,000 troops, but they're kind of stuck on the far side of the world, engaging in this stupid, stupid holy war thing. You see this? This is why I wanted to send mercenaries, not my own troops in case something stupid happened back in Serbia while my troops were over here. Though I didn't actually bother sending anyone in the end, because yes, it seems to be a bit of a, a fairly small-scale war. Okay, raise up some troops. We're not getting involved in any of this nonsense. These troops are purely, exclusively, to deal with these rebels up here. Right, all forces meet over here in the mountains. We'll bring everyone together. We'll sort this out by ourselves. And yes, Anthipatos, let's get him round to have a nice chat about how me and him need to be friends. Oh, and obviously this is the exact moment that um, 10,000 rebels have just uh, shown up to. So that's good. That's... This is perfect. Everything's under control. Bloody hell, it never rains, it pours. Ah, one nice thing though. Could I actually get Hector out of the war by basically demanding that he command my own troops? Because that'd be a good way of keeping him nice and safe. Oh, now this. This is a good plan right here. You know, I would love, I'd love to help you out with your stupid rebellion, your majesty. But I'm just too busy dealing with these rebels for you. I'm so sorry. I'm just too busy being such a damn good subject. Oh, slightly bad timing, by the way. So literally the moment I arrived... A bunch of new peasants just rose up. Okay, I think we should have this. We've got superior troops and good quality commanders here. Yes, that'll be absolutely fine. And you, he was planning to actually make a claim on me, so you can just sit the flip down. Okay, we got the rebels. The rebels are under control. We're just going to absolutely flip and smash them at this point. If we need to chase them down, they shouldn't be able to do much to us. There we go. 100%. They will now offer to uh, surrender. No problem whatsoever. How's the economy? We're making a profit, just not much of one. You guys, uh, march home if you'd be so kind. Keep some of the army standing, though. Just in case, like, you know, maybe float over here, right in the mountains, somewhere nice and safe. 
How's this army turn, by the way? 16,000 troops attacking the rebel forces. Okay. Interesting. We've also got ourselves, yeah, there's sieges going on all over the shop. The Holy War, or whatever it was, is almost done. I think Amalfi's just basically got that by themselves. No problem there whatsoever. So that's now at 90% and rising, because they're failing to make any progress whatsoever. Huge amount of the Empire just revolted. So, in fact, basically there's... There's nothing left apart from me and the Emperor, pretty much. Yeah, there's some tiny areas over there, little bit of land right here. Akia down over there, then basically Serbia. Good old loyal Serbia. Admittedly, I'm not sure where you've got 16,000 men from, because your own character card says you've only got like 14,500, but okay, I guess. Also, my mission to win round Anthipatos has worked beautifully well. He has switched his vote back to me. Okay, here we go. 18,000 odd troops and rising for the rebels. So, ideally, these two forces would, you know, fight each other and not involve me in any way. Because, okay, hang on. Break down the existing troops here. But, yes, I've still got the retinues. I can just leave Hector in charge of the retinue, that is totally 100% legit, meaning as a result of that, he doesn't need to go and fight in this stupid war, but the downside is, uh, he still can't have any more children, because yeah, if I were to uh, stop him actually doing this business here, as a result of that, he'd be called straight over to the Imperial armies. Now the thing is, should I actually get involved? Because this is a war, not to just get rid of him, but to impose uh, Phyllis, Princess Phyllis, who... Uh, I don't really want to actually, you know, have on the throne. Or is it actually? I'm not 100% sure on this. I'm not sure what she wants. Whether she just wants to get rid of him, in which case I take over. Or does she want to take over by herself? Because, uh, yeah, the war sheet's a bit vague. It's a war against the tyranny, so it's an uprising. But does that mean... Does that mean you actually want to be queen? Well, you know what? Stay out of it. Just, you know, watch from the sidelines. If they want to beat each other up, that'd be great. Also, large parts of your troops just seem to have um, ceased to exist. Which, in all fairness, works for me. That's great. Your Majesty, please tell me you're not actually currently marching across Bulgaria to go and deal with this host right now. I mean... I appreciate it, but you could be doing more important things at the minute. Also, there's another cocking plague coming in. And... Simonis. Simonis, my former lover, just bore a son to Duke Radislav of Hum, the seducer. I hate everything. Yes, indeed, my court jester, who failed to ever bear me a single child, has immediately borne a son to that guy. Great, I love everything. Still, on the plus side, I have finally completed the construction of my 500 cataphract retinue. Absolutely flipping love it right there. That's a big old pile of heavy cavalry. That's some good stuff. And with that done, the economy should kick into overdrive because, yeah, now I don't have to actually pay for these guys anymore. So uh, it was 19.09, but now I'm not actually paying for these guys to be uh, filled up. That should hopefully jump up a bit at some point. There we go, 23 a month. Love it. Now, um, small problem. The actual um, rebels have naffed off, but the Emperor is still marching north for reasons that aren't 100% clear. And the rebels are just basically, yes, causing trouble down over here. This is all fine. Everything's under control. Also, the Duke of Epirus and the Duke of Pannonia just became best friends. They now have an alliance. I'm worried by that. That worries me a lot. I mean, the Duke of Epirus is mostly pretty chill with me. Because he is a content guy. So, hopefully, that's going to be not a problem. Also, having pulled out, I believe, yes. The actual Holy War is now starting to slowly swing back in the favour of the actual Islamic faction. So, that's... Honestly, it doesn't really matter, but it might distract the Emperor, which is not good. And, okay, um, what do you need me to do precisely? You want me to go to war against these guys? 
I'm gonna say yes, I'm not breaking the alliance, but I'm not really planning to show up either. These guys have got like 2,000 troops. You've got way more than that. You do not need my help. You'll be fine. Okay, rebel forces are now losing a little bit of their manpower to attrition, and they are now drawing closer together. Just depends who really has like, say, the mountainous advantage. Oh, and this is interesting. So it would appear the army of Epirus has actually managed to get themselves caught up in this nonsense. So, I mean, that's going to pin these guys in place, but I'm not really sure you uh, you want to get involved. Like, don't walk up a mountain at these guys. Uh, definitely do not. And yes, this guy is just liking me uh, more and more and more. Marvellous. And because it never stops happening, we have got ourselves yet another new rector over in Ragusa. Still, this guy is pretty good, actually. He is, yeah, very, very good at the old statesmanship. And irritating, I've already got someone who's good at that. Yeah, I'm just flipping swimming in vassals who have got high diplomacy, which is very irritating. So it means the council is woefully imbalanced. Right, you're at least competent at stewardship. So I'm going to move you to the position of steward. Which means Loncho is now going to take over this business over here. Admittedly, he is a drunkard. Okay, but he's only 33. He should be around for a little while at least. So you can now have that position. That's great. And that means, uh, at this point, who's actually left who's, like, important? There's the Duke of Hum. But he's going to be, yes, yeah, super chill with me for another seven years uh, just because I pushed his claims. So that's all absolutely fine. No one else thinks they deserve uh, a position on the council. So in which case, I could just make one of my... Oh, that's a commander, though. Okay, we're just going to import someone to be the actual marshal. Then again, may as well just get a new commander at the same time, because yeah, there's a couple of Greeks and Serbians of the right religion floating around. Here we go, Hippatios. As you're a bit stressed out for the time being, and you're a bit malnourished and whatnot, you can actually be my marshal. Please get on with uh, training some lovely, lovely troops. Love it. And everyone else, you guys can just be my new commanders. Also, my ex-wife is holding on really nicely. She's got a lot of claims, by the way. Yeah, she lost a lot when they deposed her. But she's she's not dead yet. So, whenever you feel like it, that'd be really bloody convenient for getting my daughters back. My daughters who you refuse to get married to anybody. Okay, the Rebels and the Emperor have now got dangerously close together. They are literally standing next to each other. That is hills. That down there is uh, plains. Pretty much it evenly matched at this point. Also, I'm getting really, really damn bored of this Islamic dynasty that just will not fracture. But I can't help but notice, yeah, there's a couple of major sultans. This guy is thrilled. This guy, however, not so much. So, uh, yeah, all sorts of problems there, like ambitious and whatnot. Okay, what we're going to do just for fun is uh, send my new rector over in this direction to uh, sow a bit of dissent, which apparently he should be pretty good at. So let's just see how he gets on with that nonsense. Also, my vassals are just currently piling in to deal with the, uh, the Hungarian situation. Holy wars are all across the sky, and... Okay, you've also completely failed to collect taxes and might be about to cause a rebellion, thanks. Got ourselves a new Duchess of Altinia. Lovely, she seems fine with me, so no problem there whatsoever. Happy to just uh, let her be, to be honest. Holy War seems to have come to an end. Good, hopefully that's the last of that nonsense, we'll see. Now, yeah, I can just leave these guys over to their business over here. They're doing very, very well indeed. That's all absolutely a-okay. So all that's left, therefore, is, uh, yeah, the Rebellion. So just uh, sit back and enjoy the fireworks, really. Also, I am floating plenty of money. I can definitely afford to do some uh, upgrades at this point, though uh, tech is actually the limiting factor in many cases. Here we go. Let's just get some barracks and whatnot down around this area, because plenty of this area is a little bit on the uh, underdeveloped side. So just more and more and more, please. Maybe not stables. We've got enough stables for the time being. What about you? How are you guys doing? You could do with some barracks. There we go. So, barracks times three just everywhere, and there is more Lollard heresy. That is not good. That's gonna cause rebellions. 
I mean, I could send Daniel over there, but to be honest, he's much more likely to get, you know, attacked by the locals than he is to actually win anyone over, because he's kind of useless. Also, as this war seems to be deadly quiet down over here, what's even going on with you, by the way? Okay, that is... Uh, right, 61% in favour. So they're trying to take, yeah, Egypt back, which is not good. Not good at all. I could do without them doing that, but... Yeah, unfortunately, Catholicism seems to be sort of uh, failing in its defence of its territory on this occasion. And yes, as I suspected, the small Islamic state in the middle of Europe is not doing well. There's been a lot of holy wars against that immediately. Oh, here we go. Some of my children are actually starting to uh, get to the age of education here. So, uh, Princess Eris, the great Doombringer, who may also be our greatest hope. So, okay. How's she been, uh... Getting on. Lots of negative traits, to be honest. Those aren't great traits at all. Alright, well, martial education it is, I suppose. And we've also got, yes, the bastard Dorothea. So, you, however, have the potential to become a very good diplomat. The crucial one, however... Okay, we've got ourselves uh, haughty and brooding on Prince Callistos, together with... Uh, not terrible stats for a 10-year-old. That's okay. I mean, should I actually join the community of St. Basil and educate the kid myself? That would mean he could gain some extra points during his education, but... The thing is... Yeah. I feel like I'd actually do a worse job educating him than my wife would. She does have better stats than me. No, I'm gonna leave it be. I'm just gonna leave it be. It's gonna be fine. I have faith in my wife. My wife likes me. It's going to be fine. Okay, Pex just jumped over because, yeah, my vassals just going and doing their own thing. And unlike the stupid emperor, I welcome this. All right. They are getting stronger. They're getting richer. They're providing more money in taxes and more troops to me. There is no problem here whatsoever. You just go and eat as much of Hungary as you want. Okay, here's the crucial bit here. The main Imperial army is down over here, but Constantinople is now under attack. If they take the capital, it's not impossible they might actually capture the Emperor, because he's not with the army. Also, apparently Avanthia is just like out in the middle of nowhere with the cataphracts with me, because she's now pregnant and please, not daughter number 10. Hitting double figures would just be an insult. And as I suspected, my new allies have just won their war, massively expanding their territory. So these guys, they're going to be very, very useful friends, I suspect. I mean, you know, it's a bit of a weird form of Christianity, but screw it, I'm sure mine's weird in its own ways too. This is fine. Also, Queen of Bulgaria is getting on a bit. Bulgaria is actually in good shape right now. And young Prince Marco isn't actually a uh, hitch yet. Okay, I think we can uh, do something here. No one important, mind. How about we send over... Yes, here we go. Who's looking not so hot? Dorothea, you're just a bastard who has been acknowledged. So, uh, yeah, they are willing to do it. Beautiful. Obviously not matrilineal, but that'll do. That'll do for a non-aggression pact and potentially an alliance. And yep, she's up for the alliance too. Spot on. Oh, there's immediately been a massive revolt, presumably religious, because they just inherited a large number of people of the wrong religion. Okay, that's, that's good. Um, I could send over some friends just to, just to help you out. There's not much in the way of troops here. Yeah, 2,700. Though admittedly, yeah, the one land crossing is kind of blocked. So, uh... I guess I do have some ships, I just don't really like raising them, they're quite expensive. I will deploy the Swiss company to help you out. 2,250 decent men, alright? Not a single bit of light infantry, good, proper, solid stuff. Heavy infantry, pikemen, good troops. I'm gonna hire them right now. Now there's, yeah, 2,000 of them. Do not actually send uh, the retinues. Good, the retinues are over there. We just need to get you guys uh, over there, which is going to involve travelling by sea, I assume. So, okay. Never really bothered raising the uh, the ships before. But presumably we've got, like, 
We've got some ships, right? Does anyone know if we've got any ships? Oh, okay. As it turns out, yes, Ragusa has ships. We'll just use their ships. And yet more religious uprisings up north. Dear oh flipping dear. Right, a small force should be able to handle that, but we're going to start losing uh, money pretty darn fast. Meanwhile, deploy the ships over in this direction. That's all absolutely fine. Oh, flip. It's happened. We have got a second son. And okay, um, he's named, he's named Joseph, which is a bit, it's a bit underwhelming after Callistos, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, yes, we're going to be legitimizing him, actually. My wife's not going to be thrilled. In fact, she's probably going to try and kill him, but what can you do, eh? He's also been born left-handed, which actually means he's very good at fighting. He's got plus 25 at age zero because of his bloodline and being left-handed. But uh, unfortunately, yes, apparently the Christian church doesn't smile on this sort of thing. And yeah, legitimized bastard is always going to hurt him a little bit when it comes to diplomacy. Right, Hector, get in there and sort out these cocking rebels, please. That is open plains. It shouldn't be a problem at all. You massively outnumber them, though sometimes the game just sort of pulls more of them out of its arse, but seems to be okay on this occasion. Yeah, they're falling apart already. And the forces of Pannonia are willing to show up too, but they're a bit late, to be honest. How's the economy doing? We're losing money. Fast. Okay, you guys have managed to, uh, you guys have managed to make it, though. Um, so just land over here, if you'd be so kind. Just, um, don't mind us, we're just passing through. And yes, we just need to go and help out with, uh, all of this nonsense. So, yeah, we can actually go and, like, handle some of this together. Just get over here, and honestly, just, uh, break the ships down. Hang on, that's gonna cause... No, that's gonna cause some of them to not get home. I will send them home, we'll break them down there. Also, Xena Warrior Princess has become ill. Well, honestly, I don't care, right? I've got plenty of daughters. If a few of them die or get lost, it's fine. But go on, I guess we'll call the doc. She's very good at her job. Nope, never mind, she's dead. And this war continues as both forces refuse to actually engage the other. Okay, forces stand down. We should be making, yes, we're making a modest profit at this point. And uh, we can actually siege down this territory. Now, I could just actually, yeah, rush it. I mean, to be honest, they are just mercenaries. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Also, yeah, I actually will get the money from this, so I guess I could just do that, yes. But yeah, all of us together and... Bloody hell. Right, there is too much religious breakaway happening up north. Speaking of Bulgaria, by the way, they're actually just uh, diving in to take more of Hungary. Well, we eat more of this, and actually Hungary is... Oh, Hungary is basically gone. I feel like Hungary is not going to exist in a matter of... Oh, blimey. Okay, so remain burst. Um, okay. Italy's back. And Bavaria is also a thing that now exists independently. Okay, so that's... Okay, right. That's, that's messy. That just became really damn messy. In fact, to be honest, all of Central Europe's looking a bit of a mess right now. Germany seems to have some big revolts going on. Denmark's just figuring out what it wants to do with itself going forward. Poland's looking a bit squeezed out. Bohemia has been fighting back there. There's some brutal stuff going on there. Catholicism has almost been entirely pushed out of Spain. There's been some good progress by those guys over there. And England is just sort of, uh, yeah, stuck in a long grinding war around Wales. So... Uh, Okay, fascinating stuff. Europe is now completely a cocking mess. Okay, just check who actually, you know, runs all these places in terms of uh, religion. Well, Catholicism, obviously. So yeah, there is now a king of Bavaria. Italy's back, which is nice. Not actually House Carling, though. Different house. I'm guessing this is still uh, House Carling over here, right? Yes, that's still House Carling, but he's not doing so hot these days. Looks like there's a tiny, tiny bit of a fight back in the Crusades too. They're definitely still losing it, but not by as much as they used to. Right, guys, back north once again, but seriously, I'm starting to get bored of having to deal with all this nonsense. You guys need to be able to take care of your own business. I don't want to be marching north to deal with this for you. Still, this Byzantine revolt almost failed at this point just because uh, they haven't really lost, they've just failed to make any progress. Also, here's an interesting discussion. So, uh, I'm about to get stressed from having more than one lover. 
However, because my wife is also my lover, we fell in love, I could break up with her. Like, we'd still be married, right? Because, honestly, like, if I could get rid of her, like, by accident this way, that wouldn't be terrible. I could just marry someone else, someone younger, and get, you know, potentially a third son after another nine daughters or whatever. So, I mean, no fairness. Evanthea has served me well, so hang on, she's she's 39 at this point. My wife is only 33. But, if I break up with Evanthea, that means technically I've only got one person that I can actually get pregnant at this point, and it's my wife. And she's still 33. If I break up with my wife, I might still get her pregnant because she's still my wife. But Evanthea is still available as well. So, then again, Evanthea at 39. No, we're going to get rid of Evanthea. You've served me well, but it's time for you to go. In fact, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to break up with you and we're going to get you married to somebody lovely. All right, just someone around the court or something. Not Callistos, though. You can't marry Callistos. How about the steward of Armenia? All right, I'm sure he's lovely. Look at that. That's some decent stats right there. Right, off she goes. I'm sure Armenia is lovely this time of year. Have fun, my di- Armenia. Armenia explode- Yeah, Armenia's on fire right now. I probably shouldn't have sent her there, to be honest. Oh, here we go. All those barracks have started to appear. Flipping love it. And now we're going to deal with this revolt before any more peasants spawn in. Oh, but here we go. It's the big one. Prince Callistos is ready to begin his education. Please, please have something. Oh my. Okay, this is interesting. He has picked up conscientious and brooding, but unfortunately, haughty. Okay. Haughty's not great for anything, but... I mean, play to your strengths. Prince Callistos. Please, please turn out okay. Okay, Bulgaria managed to take some territory off Hungary and then immediately burst, because that just seems to be, you know, in fashion today. She's also called me in to help, but I'll be staying out of it for now. I think Bulgaria should have plenty of strength to handle this by themselves. Probably anyway, though admittedly, how on earth are you not dead yet? I swear you've had cancer for like the past 10 years. Also... I'm gonna hedge my bets here, okay? My wife is going to actually raise Callistos. I'm going to raise baby Joseph by myself, all right? I shall be the guardian. And now I've got two sons, I am actually going to, yeah, rejoin the community of St. Basil to give him the best possible chance. Oh, and the rebellion has come to an end too. Okay, so, you're now in prison, understandably, and you, you're now back in power. Well, you were never actually out of power, but now you should be doing much better than you were. In fact, yeah, a lot of people are suddenly in prison. But, 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 are you by any chance all of a sudden very unpopular with certain people? Yes, very unpopular. Now, I doubt you're going to go executing all of these people. So let's just see what you choose to do with them. And, ah, you're gonna revoke a giant pile of titles. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. They are traitors and whatever, but... Yeah. I suspect once you're done doing some reorganisation, there's a good chance things might be unstable for a while. In fact, now might be a really, really nice time to ask my liege for a title. Okay. What we're going to do is, oh, I probably can't bribe him. I imagine that's going to be, uh, yeah, really expensive. 500 gold to send him a gift. Okay, Scrooge McDuck, whatever. But he does like me, all right? I didn't rebel against him. So uh, now, now's the time, given huge amounts of grease just did, that you might want to, uh, I don't know, give me some of that stuff. So uh, just wait for him to revoke a little bit more here. And uh, I'm going to give it a go here. Okay, let's just try it. Let's try it here. 
Come on. If I don't get anything right now, I'm going to be very annoyed and... I am going to murder you. I am going to murder you so much. Right, speaking of murder, let's see how many people want him to die right now. Just out of interest. Okay. Quite a few people at home. Okay, when I want to say quite a few people. Like, a handful of people are up for it. Presumably because they just lost. But it's nowhere even close to killing him. Darn. I was kind of hoping people would have turned on him. Okay, just an update on the crusade. So, um, Rome itself has fallen. That's, that's fascinating. And uh, looks like the Bulgarian rebels are also coming in right now. There is the advantage of a forest here, but it's going to be close to the wire. And, ooh, patron of the arts. 55 gold for diplomacy plus one for the next decade. I'll tell you what I'll do though, I'm just writing to a friend of mine in my new society about her writing, it's not really that important. So, that's to the wire, I suspect his morale might, yep, his morale's gonna break first. Good, 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 don't need to bother getting involved in that nonsense. Also, I may have accidentally just published her book without her permission, so she's kind of annoyed. Oh, and this is good, we got ourselves someone very powerful indeed, a double duke. Together with advisor, commander, he wants my vote for a favour. Done. He will be a powerful ally when it comes to the succession votes. Which I am still winning, but it's starting to get tight. I'm guessing some of my votes... No, my votes are still bound, but oh dear. People have gone over to uh, Count Theodotus. Who's gone over to Count Theodotus and why? Virtuous, brilliant, diplomat, brilliant general, Lardy Flipping Da. Right, so some new wonder kid has just shown up and a lot of people are voting for him instead. Also, embarrassingly, Arsenios, who I just took the favour from, he's only got 40 votes. I kind of assumed he'd have a lot more than that. Okay, Strategos Neophytos. This guy almost likes me and uh, I like him. Okay, versus I like him, uh, he's brave, uh, yeah, you don't like the fact he's proud. Okay, me and you need to become friends. Alright, we're gonna become friends, right? Yeah, send him 54 gold, to make it happen. Let's just get him on side here, see if that uh, swings his vote immediately. Because he's going to be liking me more, hopefully, very, very soon indeed. You know what, screw it, I'm calling in this guy's vote right now, I'm getting a little nervous here. Okay, that gets me up to 345, that's good, that's very good indeed. And oh my goodness, the old stories of Payrun are still doing the rounds, and I'm going to strive to be more like him. I'm going to be brave, good, brave is really good. Brave is, yeah, vast opinion plus five, and that's actually going to be very useful during the votes. People like brave people. Bravery is important. Okay, holding steady at 425 votes right now. That's pretty solid. And the old Duke of Bosnia has passed away, meaning a small child has now actually just inherited a bunch of territory. Okay, actually no. There's been some form of uh, gavel kind break apart here. So uh, we've now got Duchess Philippa of Bosnia who I believe, therefore, yeah, she's not going to want to be on the council because she's female, she doesn't expect to be. The same thing happened in Pannonia recently. Another child was actually set up there, but he's just come of age, so now he actually does want on the council, which is irritating, so there's not really a great slot for him. I mean, seven will do as a steward. It's not great, but it'll be fine. Then again, he potentially is going to get himself attacked, but if he does, then so be it. And despite getting rid of my girlfriend and shipping her off to Armenia, apparently I've become stressed anyway. That's, that's not good. This is, uh, this is a concern, actually. Um, what are we going to do here? Okay, I'm now stressed, which is not good. But family focus means health plus one. How about you? You're stressed and depressed. Okay, that's, that's interesting. That's very, very good. And also, ah, 
hunting focus. Sadly, you're trying to hang on too. Right, basically we're just desperately trying to outlive each other right now. And I've got a horrible feeling that somehow Duchess Philippa is just going to outlive us both. Because by the time she does eventually die, my children are going to be past bloody childbearing age. Yep, even the youngest of the three trapped children is now 29. And she literally wants to get married. Just get her married. Admittedly, she is a club-footed, craven, cruel, gluttonous... Okay, fine. Maybe you're doing the world a favour by not letting her get married. Okay, here we go. We're starting to sway this guy to me. This is very, very positive indeed. Keep him on side. Keep the votes on me. And this is what I want to see. There are plenty of divided votes right now. Lots of candidates with only one person voting for them. Which helps me out a lot. Also, there might be an opportunity here over in this war I'm stuck in. So just waste a handful of troops. Take it. No, that was a, was a lot of troops. But that's fine. Everything's under control. Move them straight over here. There's some very vulnerable territory. We might be able to... Why am I at war with Hungary? Okay, so that's the Byzantine War for... Okay, basically, you just want to finish off Hungary. You know what? Go nuts. I think that's literally the end of Hungary right there. And also, how the cock does the papacy have this? All right, fine. It's just a thing that's happening. Whatever. Actually, there is a ton of bit more Hungary up here. Probably Poland will eat that at some point. The important point is, uh, these mercenary troops have got a bit of an open line at some relatively vulnerable territory. They've now fully taken this nonsense, so just wait for a moment. Now just crack in there, lovely. Now just crack into the next, please. Uh, and that's lovely as well. So there's some more stuff. So that's up to 36% there. There's another vulnerable territory here as well. I don't know where their troops have gone, but they seem to have naffed off, which is really going to work in my favour. So we're just going to crack on with this. You've reappeared. Okay, you were down here somewhere. Okay, you were down here. Well, that's... Okay, they're about to annihilate these guys, unfortunately. But, um... At least we can take some land. Like, we can drain them dry by forcing them to garrison. Okay, Italy seems to be recovering. It's also expanding north off the back of the Islamic State that came out of the Jihad. France is continuing to burst by the Luxi of it. Germany is having some real problems putting down that revolt right in the centre. Bavaria is... Oh, there's a lot of stuff on fire. Europe is not looking hot right now. There's some form of war going on here. Chief of Bamberg. No idea who that is. And tragically, I didn't invest enough in pursuing the artifact that we picked up, yeah, trail of bloody ages ago. So, uh, trail's gone cold. Fair enough. Um, okay. Here's the thing. Right now, we are not winning this stupid rebellion. And these guys aren't worth enough for me to invest further. I'm going to break down uh, the mercenaries. These guys are just going to lose their rebellion or they need to find a way to win it by themselves. It's just, it's too expensive for me to keep up. I'm not going to bother trying to help them anymore. We just can't beat that army and screw it. We'll just find some new friends and uh, poor old. Well, 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 well. Oh my God. Goodness. Oh, what's that? Are you dead? Oh, no. What a cocking tragedy. Yes! Okay. Died at the age of 60 from, yeah, severe injury, stress, depression. Oh, my. Oh, flipping my. So, I think we know what that means. Hector... You are now welcome to, uh, hang on, hang on, slow it down here, slow it down. You are now welcome to come in from the cold, why is, why is France here? I'm guessing they're just on their way to the crusade, it's fine. Uh, you are now more than welcome to, wait, where are all these, oh, we've probably got some troops standing at the minute for various reasons. It's, it's fine, everything's under control. Okay, you may now stand down from whatever position you're already holding here. Okay, just, it'll be faster just to say, no, don't lead armies. Oh, look at that. Look at that new hat. And uh, Parthena, you are now an empress. All right, aren't you glad you stuck with me through all of this nonsense? Oh, I've done it. I've flipping 
done it. And, uh, okay, we're up to 24,000 troops. Oh. Oh my. Oh, flipping my. Now, admittedly, things are kind of dodging in their own ways because, yeah, there's a couple of things I've inherited. Hang on, what exactly have I just got? What have I picked up precisely? And, ooh, I've picked up a new diadem. I don't get Constantinople, though. That actually goes to the son of the previous emperor. So, uh, the new capital of the Byzantine Empire is, in fact, Zeta, which feels odd, but okay. I have inherited uh, the Duchy of Thrace, but I don't really, like, own any of it. You know what? You are welcome to have this because, yeah, I can understand why you sort of uh, hate me. You were definitely second in line. I am going to give you, yeah, as a vice royalty, the Duchy of Thrace and all lower titles. You're welcome. Now, let me see, it's a minus one across the board because it reverts back to me. I mean, I could just give it to him. No, vice royalty sounds fun. You may have this with my blessing. Also, here's sad. I've literally only got one valid ambition. And it's make a friend. That's... That's kind of sad. I've spent my entire life chasing power. And now I've got it. What I've basically realised immediately is... I don't actually have any friends. Because, aw... Hector, do you need a hug? Also, screw this family focus. Screw it. Don't care anymore. You know what we're doing? We're going for... Well, we could go for war. No. Hunting. That's the safe bet. Keep health plus one. The work isn't done. I'm stressed. Keep the health up, but take an extra couple of martial. That's the stuff we need. Now, I suspect we need to actually, you know, make some... Uh, Changes. We definitely need to make some changes over on the... Oh, the entire council's just been cleared out. I mean, fair enough. How many advisor slots do I have now? Two and... Arsenios just gets to... To stay. Okay. I'm not sure why you get to stay, but no one else did. But all right, fine. Um, we need to figure out a new council. Right, guys. New emperor, new council. Oh, it's nice saying emperor. I'm emperor. I'm going to enjoy saying that for a while. Okay, so... Who's powerful and thinks they ought to be on the on the council? As it turns out, like, okay, not that many people. So, focus the Duke of Sicily, who I just actually gave that thing to. So, uh, oh, he's actually a familiar kinslayer. Cannibal! Fascinating. Um, he's also not very good. Okay, you may be one of my advisors who we keep in a different room that's locked at all times. Also, confusingly, there are two different people called Focas in senior positions in the Empire. So that's that's just not convenient. In fact, actually, you two are the only two who expect to be on the council. There's Arsenios, there is Focas, and then there's the other Focas. Okay, well, Arsenios, you would make a fine marshal. So we're going to move you straight over there. Which means the other Focas, who isn't that spectacular either, he shall take the next advisor role. They've also got almost the same face. This is this is going to be confusing, guys. And that means literally everything else. I can actually pick just the most qualified person or the biggest yes man. Now that that's interesting. Then again, you're you're all kind of terrible as it turns out. Okay, so we got ourselves a mayor. With 15, that's a competent chancellor right there. That's not too bad at all. For stewardship, we've got some random courtier. Okay, you're Croatian and Catholic. Okay, not terrible to be honest. You seem to be fine with me. Is there anyone who'd like, like me better? Who's all? Okay, this guy would be really, really keen on me. But he's not actually that, that good. I mean, he's a decent administrator. I wouldn't mind having some yes-men on the council, to be perfectly honest. Hang on, court chaplain should be an easy one, because uh, yes, you, my good man, the Pope. We need to get the Pope here, because then I can divorce my wife if need be. So you can be right there. That's good. He's a zealot, which is less good. Okay, Spymaster, that one's important. I need someone who I can trust, and uh, okay... Neophytus, Strategos. This is the guy who, ah, uh, yes. 
you actually voted for me, then again, you're also potentially dying of stress and injury. You're only 43, though. You may well recover. The best guy is this guy. And actually, he is, yes, a good acquaintance of mine. Apparently, I've known this guy before. So, okay. This is... Uh, this is of interest. You, my good man, you may be spy master. Have fun doing that. As for the steward, we've got ourselves... Oh, there's... There's a lot of dangerous votes on the council right now. Also, why do you hate me? What's wrong? Short reign, imperial administration, disavowed vassal wars. I will get rid of all of that nonsense as soon as I can. Don't you worry. Yeah, even though he's not the best qualified, I'm actually going to get this guy. Comitas, this random mayor, to be uh, the steward. Just so I've got one yes man on the council. Admitted the council is going to be discontent for two years regardless, so it barely even matters. But, okay, we've now at least got ourselves some people in good positions. And uh, for the most part, they're pretty chill with me. Also, all troops, please just stand down, stand down, stand down. Uh, who are these guys over here? I don't even know who this is, but you may also stand down. Okay, I'm just going to keep my magistros on improving relations at random with my vassals just for the time being. You may crack on with training some troops. Get over here to Zeta. Sorry, this is, uh, this is where you all live right now. This is the new imperial capital, so have fun with that. You may just scheme for the time being, just until we're confident nobody's planning to uh, murder me. You just get on with culture tech, because why the hell not? You're not actually that good at your job. But it's good to keep you on side in case I ever need, you know, to get rid of of uh, Parthena. Though, to be honest, I do think we'll keep her. All right. She did eventually provide a son. A son who I will, of course, be voting as the next emperor. And I've got 185 points to splash out. Oh, this is... That's just absolutely lovely. Why do I have 185, by the way? Ah, high prestige. But I wasn't born in purple, and neither was Callistos. But you know what? Needs must. Oh, this is nice, though. I just get to uh, have Constantinople. Well, that's good. That's going to be very valuable. Yes, I'll just be uh, having that. Okay, so the Emperor always gets to have Constantinople for free. Well, that's going to be even better when it comes to uh, the troops here. Because there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of money and... Okay, I probably should have actually made these guys work over work over here. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot of troops over here. Okay, we'll move you over there later. I'm also moving my royal cataphract retinue over in that direction too. So that gets me to domain size 8 out of 8. So right now, yes, Serbia is, or rather actually not Serbia anymore, the Byzantine Empire, the core empire, is Athens itself, Constantinople, and the core Serbian territories. Also, oh my goodness, I've got a lot of day Ure claims I can suddenly start pushing. Now this, this is how we can suddenly start uh, making some friends. Alright, if I need to make some friends in a hurry, this is how we do it. Okay, understand, who are my vassals, who's actually important, who are the big lads? Duke Arsenios, the guy who sort of hates me, he is the Duke of Trebizond, meaning basically he holds a fair bit of Magna Graecia. Not that much power though. Decent number of troops at 5,000. Unspectacular, but reasonable enough. Young Prince Sabas just has a bit of territory dotted about all over the shop, but yeah, right now he is uh, not actually of age, and also he's yeah engaged to be married to somebody. Honestly, I'm not too worried by him either. When he comes of age, he'll probably be demanding a seat on the council. Fair enough. Then we've got ourselves... Ooh. Um. Okay. Uh, guys, were you not... Okay, apparently these guys want to be on the... On the council. Well, you weren't putting your hand up a second ago when I asked who wants to be on the council. Okay. Trajan wants to be on the council. Angry, he is not so. But he doesn't even show up as... As an option. Okay, possibly things are just a bit weird, and when a month ticks over, everything will calm down. Hang on, I'm going to save the game, then reload to see if this fixes it. Nope, we've got ourselves guys who are angry they're not on the council, but they're not showing up as an option to be added to the council. And if I try and appoint them as councillors, then 
the game gets annoyed at me and says, no, you can't. Well, maybe because these people were recently added to the council. I'm not sure. Okay, you guys are just going to have to, like, accept it for the time being. Maybe we'll just let, uh, you know, the month tick over into March. Sometimes that makes the game calm down a bit. Oh my goodness, and just as I become Emperor, guess who's the weakest I have seen them in literally decades? Why it's the Islamic dynasty that stole Turkey. Finally, we can reclaim the rich Turkish coast. Now that, that'd be some good land right there. And it's all thanks to the Pope, who has apparently been absolutely smashing these guys in the cocking face. This crusade has actually been getting hot. They have just been fighting over this little bit of desert right here, backwards and forwards for years at this point. Oh, and my economy just started going up to uh, plus 44 gold. Yeah, that's that'll do. Plus 44, that'll do very nicely. And... A surprisingly small amount of wheat claims, but I've got plenty of de jure claims, so that's that's fine for the time being. And plenty of other holy wars as can be dealt with too, because uh, I've got to say, all of a sudden, the Byzantine Empire, okay, it's had its ups and downs, but it's looking like it's in a competent place right now, okay? Right at this exact moment in time, I can actually deploy 10,000 troops of my own. 13,000 from my vassals. We've also got this guy over here who we may send a small handful of troops to uh, go and help out, right? We might just uh, get him on hand. Now I've actually got the troops to hand, uh, that might be fun to do. But don't forget, actually, apparently the previous queen of Bulgaria has passed away. So there is now a child on the throne. Let's just actually, you know, firm up that lovely... Excuse me? Excuse flipping me. Okay, fine. So, um, apparently he's getting a bit, uh, nervous about an alliance. Well, fair enough, I suppose. To be honest, I am sort of planning to... In fact, why am I even bothering? Why would I bother? I can just eat you now. I am an emperor. I could just go and eat Bulgaria. I just need uh, literally anybody who's willing to come to my court. Alright, nobody just yet, but somebody will. Sooner or later, somebody will. Now, now I can start eating entire kingdoms at a time. Although, weirdly, all of a sudden the law seems to have flipped back to Vassar Ward Declaration Illegal. I mean, I'd be perfectly happy with external, but apparently nobody wants that. Like, everyone wants to vote against it. Like, I would vote for allowed, guys. I would. Absolutely. That'd be fine, but... For some reason, all of you are, like, not keen on this. I'm not allowed, all right? Just let me do it. I will flipping do it. But for this one shining moment, it's all lining up. Prince Callistos, Kingdom of Epirus. Prince Callistos, Kingdom of Serbia. Prince Callistos, Serbia 1.0. Prince Callistos in line to become the next emperor too, which would be beautiful. But, uh, yeah, I suspect a large number of people just haven't cast their, uh, haven't cast their votes yet. Because there's, there's a lot of people they could vote for. Yeah, I think the game just hasn't picked the actual valid electors just yet. So there need to be some more electors as yet. Still, the future is ripe with possibilities now, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much I could do. There is so, so damn much I could do. But I feel like it's time to uh, stretch our muscles next time, ladies and gentlemen, and take the fight to the dynasty that has been taunting me over here for so many decades. Peyron was a mighty man, but no longer can anyone hold that above Hector's head. Peyron was not an emperor. Hector is the first emperor. It has taken us three leaders to seize the imperial throne, but it is done. The question now is, can we hold it? Because that is, that is far from guaranteed. Absolutely, it could all go wrong yet. We might just lose it immediately. We might have to fight for it again. But having held it once, it's a lot easier. Because of course, once you've actually held it, you get claims that you pass on to your children. The children that have got claims are eligible by default. No more worrying about being a commander or not. So uh, life is much, much easier as a result of that. So uh, yeah, all sorts of opportunities opening up. I'll have a think about what I want to do first, ladies and gentlemen, but, uh, oh, it's gonna be good. Things are gonna start accelerating 
very, very fast, I suspect. And, uh, perhaps most importantly, uh, next time, Callistos is, uh, I think about, yeah, a year and a half away from coming of age. Those are not terrible stats. They're not the worst. They could be a lot worse. So, uh, we'll see. We will see how Prince Callistos shows up. And if it's too bad, well, in theory, there's... Ooh. Um... Yes, actually, if Callistos turns out to be terrible, and then, actually, his brother Yosef turns out to be really good and all. I swear you were better than that a second ago. You don't seem... Oh, dear, that's, that's not great. Then again, you're two years old. Okay, you're two. Maybe we shouldn't be, like, too worried by him just yet. He's two years old. Give him time, John. Give him time. Don't write him off at two. But yes, all sorts of stuff coming up very, very soon indeed. Hopefully, you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh, my God. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh, my God, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, come the chariots! Yeah. Yeah.